Welcome to the Butterfly Effect. I'm Chris Horner. This is stage one of the Vuelta España. Now, this is going to be a time trial stage, but really it's a prologue. It's 7.1 kilometers in length, a fabulous course. These kind of courses, as a professional rider, I love them. They were my favorite to do. Narrow roads, tight turns, uphill, technical descents, and then flat, running into the finish line, but still technical with a lot of turns. Exciting course for a prologue. They call it a time trial, but it's really a prologue at 7.1 kilometers. So let's get into the action because there's a lot of stuff happening when you talk about a prologue because they've divided up all the favorites on the GCs from the beginning of the race all the way to the end, finishing with Primoz Roglic, last year's winner and the year before that winner of the Vuelta. So two-time winner going off last. Keep that in mind. Now, when the race begins, it's Omar Fraley from Astana when I'm sitting on the Chesterfield and all the cameras come on. Now, he's in the hot seat, but it's not very long before Adam Yates from Enos comes through and takes over the lead. Omar Fraley with a time of 8.55 is beaten by three seconds from Adam Yates, and there Enos is in the hot seat. Now, this is what we wanted to see because the two Slovenians, I'm talking about Tadej Pogacar and Primoz Roglic, have absolutely destroyed Ineos at every race they've gone to for the last two seasons, including Grand Tours, whatever you want to talk about. If the two Slovenians show up, Ineos are always in trouble. So right away, I get a little excited on the Chesterfield because Adam Yates is going to put on a show and he's got best time. Now, the problem is he's not in the hot seat for very long because it's his teammate, Dylan Van Barley, that comes through and beats him to take a time of 8.43, nine seconds faster than Adam Yates. Now, this is helping me get excited here for the race because Ineos are starting to stack the top 10 and they're in the hot seat. Now, we start seeing more times come through with Alex Aaron Burrow at a time of 8 minutes and 38 seconds, five seconds faster than Dylan Van Barley, the Enos rider. Alex Aaron Burrow, the Astana rider, was flying. At times, I saw him going through a lot of the technical corners still in the arrow bars and holding position. Gets a little bit squirrely once in that position, but pulls it out and just flies to get himself into the hot seat for today's individual time trial. Now, still, a lot of the big favorites are to come. So I didn't believe at this point in time that Alex Aaron Burrow could win today's stage, but as all the favorites start coming through. We're talking Sepp Kuss. Now Sepp Kuss, he did a blazing start and he'll get himself into the KOM jersey for the fastest time going up today's climb. Behind him, Richard Carapaz, the Enos rider, will take off and he won't be able to get a faster time than Alex Aaron Burrow. Enric Moss, the movie star rider, is setting a good pace, but it clips his pedal and manages to save it in the right turn. Clipped it hard, we see him in the TT bike, the bike's sliding just cricket like this, he'll pull out the right turn and able to save it and keep going. Good thing because we expect big results from Enric Moss in the future stages and the first mountain stage is starting on stage three. Now behind him, Jan Tratnik, the Slovenian rider from Bahrain Victoria, puts on a great show, but he cannot get the best time from Alex Aramburo and he finishes two seconds behind him. Now, Egon Bernal, last this year's Giro d'Italia champion and 2019 Tour de France champion, is trying to win all three Grand Tours, and he's leaving the ramp second from last. When he takes off, we could see right away he's just losing time to Alex Amburo, and he'll lose about 20 seconds, 21 seconds to Alex Amburo. So there's only one guy left. But the last guy left, like I said, Primoz Roglic, Jumbo Visma. He is flying and going from the start. Now, we saw him warming up. He had the ice vest on. You see him on the rollers right there at the staging area. So he's going to get off the rollers and be able to take off from the start ramp right away being warmed up. This is changing a lot in cycling. In my day, we didn't go onto the rollers necessarily right next to the start line for the TTs at the European races. When I was racing in the U.S., we do that easy because it wasn't crowded. You didn't have the fans everywhere. But nowadays, I see they're bringing it back to the European peloton all the time. And Primoz Roglic warming up right there. So he hops off the roller. He's got his ice vest on, takes the ice vest off. And we see him take down some gels when he, just before he leaves the ramp. Now, when he's on the ramp and he takes off, we see that he's going fast. And there's never a moment throughout this race where he isn't two, three, four seconds up on Alex Aaron Burrow. Taking maximum risk when he's coming down the descent. 
just blazing through the right turn, almost scraping the wall with his right shoulder here, and he'll get down to the bottom of the climb safely, bottom of the descent safely, and then start the final run into the finish. When we see him coming down the finish line just before crossing, he's already coming out of the arrow position because he knows he's got the win on today's stage. Fabulous win. Now there's some things I want to I want to dissect here because Ineos' plan was to come in here with three leaders. And we're talking Egon Bernal, Giro's champion, Adam Yates, who's already been winning this year, and Richard Carapaz, who podiumed at this year's Tour de France. Their plan, again, is much like this year's Tour de France was, come in with multiple leaders and hope that they can attack the Slovenian rider, Primoz Roglic, and find ways to gain time on him. The problem is when you go down the start, when you go down the finish of today's stage and you see the results, Primoz Roglic is sitting first. 12th place is Sepp Kuss, the American who's riding for Jumbo Visma. Right behind him, we're talking Adam Yates, who had the best time of the Enios riders. Then you're talking Richard Carapaz and Steven Kreiswick, who rides for Jumbo Visma, then Aegon Bernal. So Enios coming in here with three different cards to play for the GC. But when you look at the results of today's stage, when you're talking about some of the tactics we might see on stage three, Jumbo Visma have three leaders too. And they're basically, all of them are in front of Aegon Bernal. And of course, Primoz Roglic is in front of all of them. Sepp Kuss is in front of all of them. So they already have two cards that they can play going up the climb on stage three if they want to play any kind of team tactics where Sepp Kuss will be able to follow the Ineos riders if if, and it's a big if, because no one's ever been able to really put Primoz Roglic in big trouble unless it's near the finish of these grand tours, like last year at the Tour of Spain, where Richard Carapaz was, af was absolutely destroying Primoz Roglic up the final climb. But Primoz Roglic found the energy to be able to save last year's Bolta with a little bit of help from Movistar. Now this year, I'll point out, Egon Bernal is about 12, 13 guys behind all the GC favorites. He lost 27 seconds to Primoz Roglic, so he's got a lot of time to make up. Now, when we finished watching the Giro for 2021, he lost a lot of time on that stage too, but there wasn't such a big deficit to all the GC favorites. Alexander Vlasov, the Astana rider, he did a solid ride. I believe he set 10th or 11th just in front of Sepp Kuss. So we have only one rider in the top 10 on GC that can challenge Primoz Roglic and put him in possible trouble with a small gap when we're talking about the summit finish on stage three. It was an exciting stage today and a great opening prologue to the Buolta. They call it stage one, so tomorrow's stage two. But definitely a beautiful stage, beautiful course, and a fantastic job from Primoz Roglic and Jumbo Visma. Primoz Roglic not only took the stage, he has the race leader's jersey. Sepp Kuss has the KOM jersey. Andre Bagioli, the Dukunic quick step rider, is in the best young jersey at the end of today's stage, finishing fifth or sixth on the stage. Fabulous ride from the Dukunic quick step rider. Jan Tratnik did a great job to finish third. So when you look at the final results, you have two Slovenians first and third, one Astana rider, Alex Aaron Burrow, was in the hot seat for about two hours on today's stage. Great day of racing. Hope you guys like my take on the butterfly effect, and I'll see you real soon for stage two of the Buelta.